Uh, so thanks everyone for uh, joining me today. Uh, I am Sergio Delamo. I work for uh, the MyCode Foundation, which is a, a foundation to essentially develop and uh, do advocacy for the MyCode framework. Uh, uh, we are also in behind the umbrella of Unity Foundation, which is a non-for-profit organization. And as Marcus said, I I lead the micro development team there, um, and I've been involved with the framework since since its inception, um, working many many of the integrations, uh, including the one that I'm gonna um, show you today. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen, and I don't know who in the audience. So I have two monitors. So I have uh, one monitor with the chat open, uh, but I will have it in a second. Um, so please, if anyone has any questions, don't uh, hesitate to ask them in the chat and I will be answering them uh, while we go. Um, instead of uh, showing you some slides today, I wanted to show you a demo uh, of how you could uh, use uh, Eclipse Store uh, today uh, with uh, the MyCode framework. Um, for those uh, who are new to MyCode, MyCode is an uh, open source framework. It's licensed uh, under the Apache 2 license. Uh, we are a JVM framework. Uh, you can build MyCode applications with either Java, Ruby, or Kotlin. And uh, what I am saying right now, uh, my desktop with the browser open in docs.myCode.io, which is uh, links to all the integrations that we have. And as you can see, uh, we have a lot of integrations with different technologies. So, uh, uh, spy the name, spy the Micronaut uh, name, which may uh, make you think about microservices. You can build any kind of applications with Micron. Um, we uh, have a nice integration, I, I like to say, with uh, Microstream. Uh, and now we have uh, the same integration. I will tell you with which thing we are lacking in Eclipse Store with Eclipse Store. Um, so the home of MyCode is uh, MyCode.io, and you can find the different integration and here in data access, uh, we have an integration for MicroStream and an integration from Eclipse Store. Uh, we released actually the integration from Eclipse Store uh, yesterday, uh, so it's uh, still not part of the Micronote uh, framework bill of materials. So as you will see during the demo today, uh, we will uh, be specifying the version of the MyCode Eclipse Store, but the uh, Eclipse Store, uh, MyCode Eclipse Store will be part of the MyCode Bomb in the next minor release of the framework, which will be MyCode 4.3.0, which will be released in January. Uh, by the way, uh, MyCode is, uh, although it's a modern framework, uh, we have been around since 2018. So the framework is used by many, many companies in production. And, and yeah, we are already in the fourth uh, major version. and. It is a, a mature technology to, uh, to adopt. Um, I have here a micro application. I wanted to show you basically um, how to integrate the micro Eclipse Store into your projects today. Uh, and I have here a pet project. Um, when I have this interface, so MyCode is a framework where you use uh, dependency injection and you use. Um, we do a lot of uh, things at build time. Uh, and you have same as if you are coming from other uh, frameworks such as um, uh, Spring Boot or Quarkus. Uh, so in, in, in Spring Boot, you will have like a REST controller. In my code, it's called just controller, but it's uh, the same idea. We support um, dependency injection uh, with construction injection. So here, uh, I am not instantiating the the a bin of type organization repository, but it's essentially uh, provided to me. Uh, the main difference with my code with other frameworks is that we do as much as we can uh, at build time. So uh, my code relies on Java annotation processors to generate meta information uh, about your project. And we generate, for example, meta information in order to fulfill the injection points. With all that said, uh, this is a, a typical application where we have a controller, we inject a repository, and here, for example, I am I want to list a, a set of organizers, and I'm essentially calling a method in the repository finder. What we are going to do is we are going to use Eclipse Store, and we are going to implement this repository uh, in our project. 
Um, and this is a crowd repository. So I have a list method. I have a show where we will show the DDs of an organizer. I have a create method. Um, I have a, and a delete and a save. So nothing that you have not seen before. Uh, and in my code, we support uh, several persistent solutions, uh, similar to what Florian was mentioning before. Uh, during the day, uh, same idea with uh, Spring Data, where you have uh, the repository pattern. Um, this is pretty much the same. So you could have, in my code, we support things such as my code data, uh, and you could have repository patterns. So what I have created is a repository. You may be, right now be backing this up with a relational database. What we are going to do instead of uh, handling persistence with a relational database, we are going to do that um, with um, put the chat so that I can see. It, which I'm not seeing right now. Sorry. We are going to handle it with uh, Eclipse Store. I'm going to see if I find the chat. Room. There you go. Um, so uh, to get started, uh, I'm going to come here. I'm going to. Um, so let me let me. One thing. So I have created here. Uh, so this is a Gradle build. Uh, my code supports both Gradle and Maven, and this is a Gradle multi-project build. And I have a repository basically for the implementation of the persistence of this application using Eclipse Store. Um, I have uh, here um, uh, basically a singleton. So in my code, we use the standard Jakarta notation. So how do you define a singleton in my code? Well, you annotate the class with a singleton. So this is a singleton of type organization repository. I'm injecting here ID generator. I will uh, show you more in a second. I have a, a couple of helper methods, but essentially the implementation of the uh, of the interface right now is empty, right? So this is what we are going to fill. So if I run uh, my test, I have a test here, uh, which um, basically tests the happy path of the application. It basically does kind of a CRUD. Uh, it creates an organizer. It basically sends a request and do like a find all, et cetera. And the test will fail, uh, understandably, because um, yeah, we are not basically, we are not implemented yet. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to come to uh, gradle.properties and I'm going to define here uh, my Eclipse store micro version. Uh, typically, I will not have to do that. Uh, but uh, so my code Eclipse store depends, has a transitive dependency on Eclipse store 1.00. Uh, but the my code Eclipse store dependency, um, it's actually 1.01. Um, so that's essentially, I just defined the version. And now we're going to add uh, the dependency. Um, the same as with other parts of the framework, we do uh, uh, a lot of, uh, not a lot, but some logic at compilation time. Uh, I will explain you what we do at compilation time. So in the uh, Eclipse Store uh, module, I'm going to add some dependencies. Um, so first of all, I'm going to add the, um, the, I'm going to add the Eclipse Store bomb. So every MyCode module publishes a bill of material module uh, so that I don't have to specify the version here. Um, I'm going to add to my annotation processor class path uh, the clip store annotations. Um, we use a feature in my code called annotation mapper, where we essentially uh, we have uh, the my code the clip store integration ships with uh, several annotations. Uh, I'm going to show you one today, which is a store params, but with ship with another one called a store return or a store. And essentially, the uh, annotation processor class path, uh, the, the annotation mapper. Uh, which we're going to add to our annotation processor class path is going to map between those annotations. Uh, then I need um, to add to my implementation class path. So for those coming from maybe that's kind of the compiled class path, uh, I'm going to uh, add um, the um, IO micro the clip store. Um, we don't have to specify here the version because the version is going to come from the clip store bomb. And I'm going to add also the annotations as well, uh, because we, um, yeah, we're going to write them in the code. So um, let me see if um, I didn't do any typo. Uh, so the thing is still, uh, the, the test will still fail. Uh, and I will run the test uh, so that it fails. And I will show you, there you go, here. So the test is still, actually, there is like, uh, Problem with the deep shot. 
tai podi tai Let me copy paste from here like that. Okay, uh, the problem was that I let me actually use my contact clip store version, which is more correct. Um, so we have to add these dependencies, uh, no problem. Uh, and now the test will still fail, but at least uh, the builder will not complain. So uh, if you have attended the other clip stores talks during the conference, uh, you have seen that one key when using an Eclipse store is to define a root object. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create here a kind of the entrance of my uh, persistent hierarchy. I'm going to call it data. I kind of uh, like to call it data. Uh, and I'm going to um, create here a map. Uh, so we could persist as we wanted to. There is no really. Um, and I'm going to use here organizer. So it's going to be like a, um, a map with uh, key is going to be the organizer ID, and then we are going to have a organizer. And let me create a getter as well. Um, so let me show you organizer. Organizer is um, a Java record. Uh, so we are living in the future. Uh, and we have uh, some uh, standard the Jakarta validation notations for things that are required or not, uh, because I like to do that. And then we have some annotations also like uh, essentially telling that these things are optional. Uh, and we have an annotation. This is not required for uh, for microstream, but we are using this uh, in other parts of the framework. So Micro has a, a kind of a drop-in replacement for Micro Jackson data mine. So you can use Micro Jackson data mine uh, or use Micro serialization. And Micro serialization for security reasons, you have to whitelist the classes that you want to be serialized. And that's kind of of an annotation that Micro will use to generate meta information about how to serialize this class without using a uh, reflection. Uh, so yeah, nothing uh, in particular related to Eclipse Store. The only thing that I want to show you is that I'm going to use basically uh, a Java record. Um, so then, uh, so we are going to tell via configuration that we want to use uh, this class as the root of my um, of my hierarchy, and I will do that uh, in a. Let, let's do that now. So I'm going to actually write it here in. So I have a configuration class. So Michael supports configuration with properties files, with YAML, with TAML, with config4k. I have here uh, a configuration class that is going to be loaded in my. Uh, let's actually add it here to the test class path. Uh, so I'm going to. Uh, let me see if I am able to. I have the Zoom window in front of me, so I don't uh, really see that. Uh, we should uh, be able to get some auto completion here. Eclipse store. Uh, we are going to do a storage, um, and we are going to do. We have to use when you see the um, asterisk desk is because uh, my code Eclipse store supports having uh, multiple instances in the same application. So I'm going to call my instance main. Um, and uh, for now, to get us started, I'm going to use, um, I'm going to essentially uh, define the root class. Uh, and the root class, just not to make a mistake, let me copy the package. So it's going to have to be the fully qualified name of the class. So it's going to be the package plus the class name. And this is going to be the root class. Um, um, for now, what we are going to do is I'm going to do a clip store and we're going to do a storage directory. I'm going to uh, save uh, here in the clip store folder. Uh, so I'm going to use uh, a storage target of disk. So I'm going to save to disk. And we could actually use even uh, something uh, for the test uh, in order to avoid uh, test pollution. Uh, we could even use a feature of MyCode, which will be to generate like a random uh, UID. And that time, each time we run, create like a, it will basically create a, another folder with a different name. 
Um, so some configuration not a lot as you can see just pointing the root of the class and essentially telling to use a storage a storage directory to save uh, the persistent data uh, and now let's go to the interesting part which is let's uh, use a um, eclipse store to do our application i'm gonna do the um, so the first thing that we are gonna use is my code has uh, uh, an api called root provider which is really simple it's called root provider um, and it's a functional interface as you see uh, and it has a single method which returns the root instance and it has a generic so i'm gonna uh, inject an instance of root provider with the type of the, the, the class that i created i'm gonna create here root provider uh, i'm gonna do a dependency injection in the constructor and now we have this thing available so how can you implement a uh, the get implementation of this. So I'm going to do um, root provider uh, root. Uh, I'm going to get the organizer. So the, you see this is like uh, working with Java. Uh, this returns a map. And what I want to do is um, find one by ID. I'm going to wrap it in an optional of nullable. Uh, because uh, this thing may not have, may not exist in persistence. and. I think that's it. For find my ID, uh, it's essentially the same thing. I'm going to actually call the method that we just wrote, uh, and I'm going to uh, do a map. And I think I created a convenience method for me, which is, I think, this element of. I think it's, it's a method which essentially takes uh, an organizer something. There's an element, so this essentially fulfills. Um, find all. Uh, Pretty similar. I'm going to get the root instance organizers and I'm going to do values map this element of to list. And that's it. And we implemented the, uh, and the count. We are still, we still have not implemented the count. So I'm going to do a root provider root get organizers size. Uh, we are missing the save, the delete, and the organization update. So this is the interesting part. Uh, I'm going to create... Um, so I'm going to do something first. I'm going to do the delete. I'm going to check a uh, root provider, root, get organizers. Um, I'm going to say contains key, uh, organizers has an ID. So if these things contains, then let's try to... Uh, to essentially remove this thing. I'm going to create a protected method. It's important that it's not private because uh, if you did private, my code will need to use reflection to essentially do the logic of this method because we are going to create an around um, interceptor for this method. I'm going to take this method with the store params, uh, which is an annotation that my code Eclipse store has. And as the name says, is uh, it's going to essentially um, store the parameter um, this uh, so the key when working with a uh, clip store with micro stream is that you have to save the thing the container that you modified and i'm going to remove something from the map so i'm going to uh, store the thing that i um, that i removed um, so i'm going to come here i'm going to do uh, i'm going to call this method uh, delete as well Instead of this, I'm going to pass here string organizer. I'm going to call this organizers. This is going to match exactly the name that we have here in the annotation. So it's going to save this map. And I'm going to pass here an ID. And I'm going to do here organizers remove ID. And here we are going to essentially call this method. I'm going to do delete. And I'm going to copy this into organization delete ID. So my code is, uh, this is all you need in Micronaut uh, Clip Store integration. Uh, uh, you have to understand well uh, the golden rule of a Clip Store, uh, which is that you have to save uh, the container what you are modifying. Uh, and I am essentially removing uh, an empty from the map, so I have to save the map. Uh, um, for the for the safe is going to be uh, pretty much for the safe and update is going to be almost identical. 
Uh, so I have some convenience method here for me. So I have this, uh, I think I have of oh, organizer of from save. Um, so I'm gonna generate one ID. That's why I have uh, an ID generator and I'm gonna pass this. This is gonna be an organizer. And in the update, I think I have an equivalent organizer of, but which just takes the update method. Um, and now we are gonna have, uh, we're gonna create a method essentially um, to essentially save the organizers. And I'm gonna pass an organizer here. Um, yeah, nothing fancy as you will put things in a map, organizer ID and organizer. And now I can call safe organizer, uh, safe organizer. And I have to pass the map of the root provider. Uh, let's see the test pass, uh, which it did. Um, so as you see, incredibly simply to uh, create persistence with MicroStream, um, um, with, sorry, with MicroStream, with Eclipse Store uh, and Micron. Um, you can work in a low level if you don't want to you work with the annotations. I personally think with the annotations, it's really smooth uh, to work with uh, uh, with MicroStream. So let me, uh, let me, with the clip store, sorry. Uh, I'm gonna uh, come here and I'm gonna um, do like, um, I'm gonna now call the folder here, I'm gonna call uh, dev. And let's run the app. And so if I go here, you see like the different folders for the text execution here being created. Uh, I'm gonna run the app. Um, so one thing that I wanted to show you that I had to do in order to run in a Micronode uh, application with a uh, clip store, I had to uh, start the application with um, these JVM uh, arguments. Uh, so without these JVM arguments, uh, you will see an error. So that's in addition to adding dependencies, that's one thing that I added. So this project that I just ran has the implementation to this uh, repository implementation. So if I now go to um, localhost uh, 8080 organizer list uh, and I click create, uh, so this is a microsoft application rendering server-side HTML using Timeleaf and a, a recent feature that we added called fields that generator, so which extremely simplifies generating forms. Um, so I'm going to create one entry for uh, the company behind MicroStream. So I'm going to create here um, like an entry here. And I'm going to um, copy the address the phone, postal code, the email address. Then I'm going to add here like a 10, 10. I'm going to submit the form so I can navigate, I can edit the thing. I can, for example, remove this space and save. Nothing that you have not seen before. So I create application. Um, and now if we uh, stop the app, so you see like the clip store folder was created here with the things that we have been persisting. So if I now run the app again, my data should be there. Um, So I just refresh the browser and the data, is, of course, as you were expecting, the data is here. Um, we have another nice integration with uh, another piece of MicroStream, which uh, the Clip Store, uh, sorry, when I am saying MicroStream replaces with the Clip Store, Clip Store, uh, both the Clip Store and MicroStream, they offer a, a graphical user interface client uh, to essentially allow you to kind of see uh, what uh, you have persisted. And 
that client needs to connect to a REST interface. Uh, so we have an additional dependency, Michael, that you can add uh, to connect to that. So let me add that dependency and show you how to enable it. So I'm going to add, um, mm -hmm. I'm going to add, uh, I have to add uh, this dependency. I have here my notes. Give me one second. So I'm going to add this dependency. I'm going to add it to development only because uh, it is important that you essentially are not exposing this thing in production uh, because essentially it's like a, a a portal to all your persistence data. Um, so we, by default, if you select this feature in Michael Lunch, which is our project generator, we will add it in development only. I have added it in development only. We have also to enable it, uh, even when you have the dependency. So I have to do a clip store, this uh, rest enabled, true. And now if I run my app, We put a warning just to make sure that uh, you don't go with this to production. But this is essentially really useful uh, when you are developing, uh, especially when you are starting with Eclipse Store and you need to understand the six, exactly which parts of your tree uh, you have to save. Um, so the application is running in 8080. Uh, I have here in my terminal, um, I have in my applications folder, so I'm running macOS, I have like the uh, this is not a Microsoft application. This is this uh, jar file that is uh, provided by Eclipse Store. Uh, I am going to run it in a different port than the one by default. So by default, the port will be 8080, which will conflict with my Microsoft application port. So I'm going to run it here. Um, and I'm going to use this uh, client uh, graphical user interface to connect to my Microsoft application. So when you add the Microsoft Eclipse Store REST uh, dependency, it's going to expose a new endpoint uh, under uh, slash Eclipse or that path is configurable. Um, so I'm going to go to, um, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to stop and run the app again. So I don't think, um, and now I'm going to go to localhost 8080 all eights, uh, which is the port of my custom instance. And I'm going to try to connect to the uh, micro instance, which is uh, localhost 8080. Eclipse store, as I said before, this is configurable. You can change the path. Um, as you can see, the graphical user interface allows you to navigate the contents of uh, your tree. So you can see the, the organization that we just saved in this demo. Um, so this is really useful uh, for local development. And I think we have a really nice integration with Eclipse store REST. We make out Eclipse store REST. Um, so yeah, uh, there is um, an additional thing that I wanted to show you. Um, in addition to uh, using a, a disk as a storage target, uh, we support uh, using um, we support using uh, additional storage targets with Eclipse Store support, such as uh, saving to a relational database or uh, saving to S3 um, or to DynamoDB, right? Uh, so I'm going to show you how to save to S3. Uh, and I am running here. Uh, so I have the AWS SDK um, uh, command line interface, and I am authenticated to an AWS account. Uh, so when we run the application, my application is going to have uh, essentially permissions to write to this bucket that I'm going to show you. Uh, I have uh, here an application called Transmit, uh, which is uh, from this company called Panic, uh, which um, essentially is like an FTP client, but it has support for S3. Uh, so I have here uh, essentially Panic uh, Transmit open to this uh, S3 bucket, which I, as you can see right now is uh, completely empty. And what we are going to do is instead of saving to disk, uh, we are going to save to this S3 bucket um, a storage target. And uh, in order to do that, we are going to have to do two things. We are going to have to change, uh, we're going to have to add some uh, extra dependencies, and we're going to have to modify our configuration. Without further ado, let's do that. Um, so I'm going to come here and I'm going to. Um, 
I'm going to have to add a storage target. So, uh, and for the, we have to provide also the bucket name. Um, so the back, the bucket name we have, I have here copy paste. So the bucket name uh, is, I named the bucket Micronaut Eclipse Store Demo. Micronaut Eclipse Store Demo. And uh, so I have the root class, the same root class, and the bucket. And we're going to need a couple of things extra, which is uh, I'm going to need now to add some dependencies. And those dependencies are, um, first of all, we need the S3 dependency. We need the Micro AWS uh, SDK version 2 dependency. This essentially will uh, provide you the, the necessary S3 classes and the authentication that you will get with Micro AWS SDK v2. You, independent of you, if you are using Eclipse or not, with these dependencies, you are for, you can, for example, inject an S3 client as a bin in your applications. And another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, a runtime dependency to um, or Eclipse uh, store. Uh, and to the AWS S3. So we have support also for Dynamo and for um, PostgreSQL. So with these two things, uh, I think we have all the things. I'm going to stop my application and we are going to run it. And now uh, it should try to use uh, an S3 bucket to save. I'm going to refresh uh, the S3 bucket here so that you see that I am not cheating and there is nothing here. Uh, and I'm going to uh, run my app. Uh, now it should be empty. So if we go to the browser, we are not going to see anything. Um, so if I go here to a localhost 8080 organizer list, we should see no organizers. The demo gods are with me. Why is not loading? Let me try again. Try to disconnect to this. Let me try to go to again to localhost 8080 organizer list. There you go. Uh, so let me save again an organizer. Uh, I'm going to do it um, fast now. I'm going to do something. I think the email address has to be a valid email. Now it's saved. Uh, we can edit the thing or delete it. And if I now refresh the S3 bucket contents, we should see it uh, here. Um, you see the contents uh, being created. I'm going to stop the application and run it again, and we should be able to uh, connect to uh, again to the, should be able to use the S3 storage uh, target. So it refreshed. Uh, you see that we are uh, using the S3 storage target because we have the, the funny data that we have. Um, yeah, that's kind of uh, storage targets that are not this based uh, on a nutshell. Um, I'm going to do something else. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of uh, other features. I'm going to go to, um, I'm going to do here endpoints, um, health details, visible, Anonymous. Uh, I have uh, the micro management dependency, which will expose, will expose endpoints, and one of the endpoints is a health endpoint. Uh, those who are new to micro, but you have experience with Spring Boot, um, uh, uh, micro endpoints are similar to Spring Boot actuators, and we have a health endpoint which will essentially uh, aggregate several health checks. And one of the health checks that we have is for uh, Clip Store. So I'm going to run the app. I'm going to go to a uh, local host, uh, 8080 health here. I'm going to do curl local host, 8080 health. 
Ah oui, tu dis... Details for Eclipse Store, as you see here. So uh, Eclipse Store, uh, the micro Eclipse Store integration contributes to, to the health endpoint. And also if you are using micrometer, it contributes with metrics as well. Um, and I think that's all I had. Uh, I wanted to leave some time for questions. Um, so where, where to go next uh, will be to go to docs.micro.io and search for Eclipse Store. Um, we have a great tutorial um, GitHub page is not loading apparently. Um, okay. So we have a guide about using a uh, micro with microstream. We are publishing the same guide we had with Eclipse Store, so it will be live uh, within the next days. Uh, but if you want to get going, this is pretty much the same guide, but essentially using microstream strings instead of a clip store. Um, the only difference between the clip store and the microsteam integration is that uh, microsteam uh, has uh, the cache modules. So you can use uh, microsteam as a cache implementation when you are using micro cache and that's no, no, still not available with a clip store. And once it's available with a clip store, we will add it to the micro clip store integration. But uh, apart from that, uh, they are essentially in feature parity. Uh, are there any questions from the audience? Uh, there is a question about if is it possible to use a Google Cloud Storage as well? Uh, so we don't have uh, that integration in Micronaut, uh, but it should be quite easy to, to do it. Um, so yeah, essentially I think uh, for me, uh, if you don't want to use this uh, storage persistence, which probably is the best idea, uh, I think the cloud storage solutions such as uh, S3, Google Cloud Storage, and the, the equivalent in Azure will be the best uh, candidates. But we don't have yet an official micro Eclipse Store uh, Google Cloud Storage integration, not yet. Are there any other questions? As uh, Marcus said uh, during this morning, uh, any ideas about how we can improve the integration are more than welcome, of course. Um, Yeah, my God, uh, like, uh, so the, the question from Nils, uh, my God object storage uh, is a different module. Um, so the idea with that, so the storage targets from micro, so from Eclipse store, the idea is that uh, it is transparent for you where you are saving. And instead of saving to this, you can be saving to a remote location such as an S3 bucket. Um, the micro object storage uh, is kind of a cloud agnostic API uh, that you could use to save to this, uh, save to an S3 bucket, to a uh, Google um, cloud storage, to Azure, to Oracle Cloud. The idea there is um, if you are like, for example, writing an application and you need to add the functionality for the user to upload a profile picture, you will use micro uh, object storage module. But this kind of a different use case. So it's kind of when you are using Eclipse Store S3 target, you don't you really don't interact with S3. And as you saw in my demo, I added the dependency with runtime only scope. So I'm not even I'm not even referencing the, the S3 classes in my, in my project. Uh, like REST, is there a GraphQL interface? We do have a GraphQL module, yes. Um, 
let me send a link. Uh, we have a GraphQL module. Uh, we don't have anything particular integration between GraphQL um, or Eclipse Store. But I saw like the book demo uh, of Eclipse Store is uses uh, Lucene and GraphQL. It would be nice to try to pour that to Micronaut and and so all the pieces of the ecosystem uh, fit into it. Are there any other questions? Yeah, thank you for attending. Okay, so if there are no more questions, thanks everyone for uh, attending. I think there is uh, another talk just after me, but uh, since I finished five minutes early, uh, we can go to drink a coffee, I guess. Um, so there is a talk at uh, four Central European time about the Clip Store community. Um, so yeah, thanks everyone. And if you want to ask any questions, of course in GitHub and we have a Discord community for Micronaut and you can find me on Twitter or um, or Mastodon. Um, uh, my website is sergiodelamo.com and you should find any contact information there. Thank you, I appreciate it.